Hello and welcome to our fourth Sunday in Advent where I'm going to talk today about the divine connection and we're going to be looking at the passage of Luke chapter 1 verses 26 to 38. In the sixth month God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son. And you will give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? asked the angel. Asked asked her, uh, how can will this be, Mary? asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. This is the word of the Lord. Today I'd like to talk to you about the divine connection, especially in England at the moment, in particular the South East. We're feeling actually uh, a lot of disconnection. We're finding actually we're finding ourselves isolated from others. But as we come into the final week of Advent, we are really encouraged to find once again that divine connection with us and God. And in the passage today, we sort of Mary, did we not? Hearing those wonderful words from the angel, do not be afraid, I bring good news. God is going to overshadow you and you will give birth to this beautiful baby called Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. And Mary's answer, yes, as the Lord's will shall be, I will do it. What encouragement can we get from this passage, especially in this coronavirus pandemic, can we take for ourselves, our families and our, and our, our communities? The first thing I would like to say about having a divine connection is to look at the human story, first of all. You see, Mary was someone who was a, a, a normal person like you and I. But the divine connection entered into a relationship with humanity through Mary. You see, in the quietness of life, God entered and spoke to Mary. You see, Mary was simply a woman from, it said a town, but really we're thinking of a village. I live in a village of over 5,000 people. And I'm not talking of a village that size. I'm talking of a backwater, somewhere very quiet. And in the quietness of life, God makes the divine connection with Mary. In our house group this uh, last week, we've been looking at humility. And the sense that actually humility has nothing to prove. It has a confidence, a, a stillness about it. Mary wasn't a weak uh, like Uriah Heap, but she knew that she was a child of God and she knew the, the sacredness of life. And that's where God entered into. He entered into a place where there was great quietness. In the quietness, God will come into your life and into mine this Advent. Let us be still. And furthermore, within the human story, we not only see uh, this, this quietness of life, But we see this acceptance of life, don't we? We see Mary saying, I am the Lord's servant. Even though there is this paradox going on. How can God become 
one of us. In fact, actually, that is the whole of the, the Christian faith. My faith and your faith is based on a paradox. God becoming human. And no matter how much we try and explain it, no matter how many times we could, uh, how many uh, doctorates we could get in theology, there is still that paradox right in the centre of the Christmas story. And like Mary accepting the angel's words, we have to enter into the mystery of our faith. So much so that we then accept like Mary, I am the Lord's servant. Furthermore, in this uh, the human part of the divine connection, we also see that that Mary had f- had fear within life, had this fearfulness, was scared in the midst of life. And God enters into Mary's life and into our life, not when everything is fine, but actually in the times when it's really, really scary, like at the moment with the coronavirus or an illness or with your finances or your health or with your own security, God breaks through the barriers that we as a society put up and say, I want to make that divine connection again. Mary was scared. But do you know what, friends, what courage is? Courage is being scared, but holding on for that one minute more. I love that. Being, Being courageous is being scared, but holding on for one minute more. And with Mary in this passage today, we see her trembling, but saying, I will do the Lord's will. You know, uh, I'm uh, looking at this passage again afresh. And I believe, as I was reflecting on this passage here, yes, Jesus was fully God. But in his life, he was fully human. And I believe a little bit of, of the DNA of Mary in, her, in the looks I'm sure Mary would have looked like Jesus, but I believe there would have been that a little bit of that resoluteness, that that human passion uh, and, and, and can do attitude that Mary had stayed with Jesus all of his days, that resolute injection. And so we see in this story today, the divine connection is not just pushed on humanity, but enters into a relationship through the quietness through the acceptors and in the, the scared uh, reality of life at times. What do we see then of the divine story? It's not just the human story, it's not just humanity taking the brunt here to save the world. It has its part, but God is the major stakeholder in the redemption story. And we see in this passage here of the angel. And with the angel, It reminds us that the divine connection is all about, from God's perspective, making it known. God really wanted to underline the fact that he was in the business of ensuring that redemption was coming to town. Sometimes uh, people say, where is God? What's happening? Well, on this circumstance, in this situation, God made no uh, room for error here. No margin for people to miss this. An angel came to see Uh, to see Jesus, uh, to see Mary, who's going to give birth to Jesus. You know, when um, uh, I'm I'm reflecting on on this divine connection, I've been going into schools recently, and before I even utter a word about the Christmas story, people who are seven or eight can tell me all about the Christmas story. And then I realised to myself, oh my goodness, they don't need me in school. You know, because they know it all already. Mary knew the redemption story already. She heard from scriptures years and years ago. But the angel came, the divine came to bring a fresh perspective, if you will. He came to show that actually it wasn't just an historic event, but it's an event that was happening right now and happening in the future. Our role as Christians is to break into this sometimes a dusty story of 2,000 years ago, 2,000 miles away. Not being just an academic story. But like with the angel uh, speaking to Mary directly, God wants to speak to us directly. There's a word I've been, I've been uh, trying to practice uh, in saying, ostrony. Ostrony. It's taking the familiar 
and making it unfamiliar so that the divine can come in and break into our lives again. Like Mary speaking to the angel, God wants to speak to you and make it known again. Loud, creative, spontaneous. This story was meant to shake nations, change the world. In fact, it turned the Western society's clock from BC to AD. The divine connection. God is all about making it known. Not only that, but we see through the angel is that they make it, that the angel wanted to make it clear. Absolutely. There was questions from from Mary and that the angel was quite happy to answer. (laughs) Unlike Zechariah previously, that's another story. But the angel wanted the, uh, the, the Virgin Mary to hear and to understand. We have the scriptures now. And as I was in, uh, in St. Albans yesterday, there was the Gideons had a tent. And I went up to them and I said, thank you so much for all the Gideon Bibles. For me, it was part of my life journey to becoming a Christian it was the Gideon Bibles. So I could look at passages such as when I'm scared or afraid or don't know where to go. And the divine connection through scripture now for us, we may not always get angels coming to us like Mary, but we do have the scriptures that Mary didn't have, the New Testament. And it explains clearly, like what the Gideons were trying to do on the street, explaining clearly the scriptures. We have it in our hands today. As I've talked to you today, may this be a divine connection for you, that God wants you to hear him speak through the scriptures and make it clear and also make it known. The further, the final thing I like to say about the divine connection on the God's side is that God really is the one that makes it happen. You may think it's Mary. You may think it's Mary, Joseph and the donkey. You may think it's the innkeepers and the shepherds and you may think it's the wise men that make the story happen. And yes, it does in a nativity show. But God is, as I said, the major stakeholder in the redemption story. We've got to allow him to make it happen. We can't force things like Mary giving birth to Jesus. There's no forcing in this. She had to take the nine months. She had to wait, bide her time, go through maybe as social embarrassments of not being married, but being pregnant. She had to go through trusting in God that this is the truth and for for Joseph to hold on. But God was the major stakeholder. He made it happen. Like he made it happen with the cross and the resurrection. Your redemption is not linked to your works. Judas Smith once said this, my performance does not rob me of his promises. I love that. My performance does not rob me of his promises. And Mary would have been saying those words or similar words. My performance does not rob me of his promises. God overshadowed Mary and he will overshadow you with the promises, with the the connections that you need in life with the the days ahead in the coronavirus, with the lockdown. He is the major stakeholder in your your future, in your route. May you be encouraged and stay close to him. So with this divine connection, as we're coming into uh, the the story of, of Christmas in a few days' time, what does this have got to do with me? Yes, I hear I hear you clearly, Daniel, talking about that we need to accept and we, we need to, to be quiet like Mary and we need to, to hold on. And yes, I, I do hear you, Daniel, when you're, you're talking to us about that sense of, of God making it known and making it clear and making it happen. But what has that got to do with me right now when I'm going through what I'm going through? Well, let me tell you, I want to give you um, a, a few encouragements to end with. The first thing is don't give up on yourself because of this divine connection that God is longing for you to enter into again today. Don't give up on yourself. Can I give you some fashion tips? (laughs) I'm not talking (laughs) about uh, in the shops down the road, but some spiritual fashion tips. Being negative, being down on yourself is out of fashion. Being uh, hard and, and feeling negative, thinking, where is God in the coronavirus? In a, God has given up. That doesn't fit you well. That's a bad cut. May I give you a fashion tip? Put on love, encouragement. Put on a sense of, of a, a can-do attitude. Don't give up on yourself. Don't be hard on yourself. The divine connection is too much for you to lose in the midst of what we're going through at the moment. The second thing I'd like to tell you and encourage you with is that at this Christmas time, 
There is room for you and your incarnation. You may feel, man, uh, there's, there's no room for me here with God. There's no room for me to, to, to be myself. I've just got to just hunker down, get through it and, and live it out. And that's it. No, this is a once in a century opportunity for your incarnation, like Jesus' incarnation, to find room. You may feel like you're in a stable or amongst uh, uh, the, the, the unforgotten, the forgotten and, and the, the, those who are broken. But bloom where you're planted. You know, I was with uh, the other day um, a group of, of children doing their Christingles at church. And when we was lighting those candles and how darkness constantly misunderstands light. May I encourage you today that there is room for you this Christmas to enjoy, to celebrate in the mix of the pain. That's why Jesus came for the divine connection where you are, not where you want to be or where you feel you should be, but where you are now. A final couple of things I'd like to say. May I encourage you that you have deep within you the ability to pray. Every person has the ability to pray. Everyone has. Prayer simply is the awareness of God. I believe as I've grown up more and more, um, before I used to think, oh, you need to tell people about prayer and, and they'll develop it and they'll, they'll, they'll catch on to it. No, I feel I'm, a, I'm a, I guess, um, a bit like uh, uh, the, the, the patriarchs of older of, of Isaac unblocking wells. One of his roles in life was unblocking wells. And I want to unblock block this well for you today and say that you do have the ability to pray. You, like I, have a telephone to God. I just want to I encourage you to say, when was the last time you picked up that telephone to God? Whether you're the Pope listening to this, hello. <laughs> whether, you're, whether you are the, uh, the Prime Minister, good morning. Whether you are the Queen, ma'am. Or whether you're just someone like me who lives in Shenley, may I encourage you, when was the last time you picked up the phone to God? The divine connection is waiting. The operator has put you uh, uh, on, a, on a connection with him. There's a, there's a hotline to him right now. May I encourage you to pray, stop, be aware, listen. Mindfulness and and many other things have reminded us that we just need to be still. But I'm telling you that the Christmas story goes further than just being still. May in the stillness, may you learn to pray. And know that you've always had it from the moment you were born to the moment you die. And finally, this Christmas, sometimes we may think the divine connection is lost, that God is unknowable. But I want to turn that around and give you the challenge. That God is endlessly knowable. Not unknowable, endlessly knowable. God is very, 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 very detailed. You see him everywhere. You see him in, in your friends. You see him over a meal. You see him in your loneliness, in your illness. You see him in the joy uh, of, of the season. You see him in the lockdown. You see him in hospital. You see him on the streets. You see him at work or in your unemployment. May I encourage you this Christmas, the divine connection of Jesus coming to earth, emphasises, shouts aloud that God is very, very knowable. I'm going to end with a prayer and may this be a Christmas prayer for you this day. Jesus, we want to thank you that you came to earth to be one of us. We want to thank you that you made the divine connection and that you love us more than ever. I pray for myself and for my friends who are listening that we would take off the bad clothes and put on love and peace. We remind ourselves that we are valuable and that there is room for us this Christmas for our incarnation of life to flourish in the midst of the coronavirus. May you help us to stop rather than eat and drink. May we just be still and fill that void with your spirit. For Lord, you are knowable. Whether we're six or 106, whether we have a doctorate or whether we're still learning to read, you come close to us because of Jesus. Amen. 
Amen. I hope you have a lovely Christmas. I hope uh, the, the season will bring you hope and joy. Give us a message. Encourage me. I love it. Subscribe. Do whatever you feel is right. But may you know that God is with you and he loves you very much. Amen.